This is a rear brake caliper off of my 98 Civic Type R. It failed the brake force portion of my last MOT. So today we're going to be rebuilding this. I'll show you what tools and uh, rebuild kits I use to get this done, as well as some tips along the way because parts of this are pretty tricky. The good thing is a lot of uh, Honda and Acura models from the 90s and 2000s share the same sort of style caliper. So if you own a car from that era, this should be helpful to you. So let's get started. First thing I removed is the bleeder valve. These are typically pretty rusty, so be very careful with them. Make sure you use a 6 point and not a 12 point socket, or else you could round them out very easily. Next up is the banjo bolt. If you already have this out the car, it should be pretty easy. Next we have this spring to remove. Take some needle nose pliers, twist to the right and up, and it should come right out. For this nut, I would use a 17 millimeter socket with a ratchet or a wrench to remove, but I've already loosened mine, so it came out pretty easily. Next up is this bracket. You should just need to wiggle it a bit and it should come out. Now we just need to get this out and then we'll be on to removing the piston. There are a few different ways to get this piston out. But this is how I'm going to be doing it. This is a set of vice grips along with the flathead punch I have. Just take your time getting it started. It might be stuck in place and take a pretty good deal of force to get moving. Once you get it out a little bit, pull down the dust boot and keep twisting it. And eventually you'll notice that it stops coming out any further. And then at that point, you can grab the piston and it should pull right out. Now what you want to be looking for with these pistons is pitting right around where you see that rust on the side of the piston there. Now this one's in decent shape actually, but I got a brand new one so I'm going to replace it anyways, but I'll probably keep this one just in case I need it in the future. Now we have this dust boot to remove that goes around the piston. And you want to clean this channel out that it sits in if it's, if it's in bad shape. Next up we have this snap ring to remove. Unfortunately my snap ring pliers do not reach all the way in there. So what I ended up using was two picks, a straight one and a 90 degree one. I use the straight one to get it started, kind of like get in there and wedge and it should pull one side out if you, uh, if you do it right. And then once you get one side out, I use the 90 degree one to wrench on it and get it the rest of the way out. These next few pieces should come out pretty easily. This is just what the snap ring was holding down. This right here is what the piston screws onto. Uh, I couldn't get with my fingers, so I use these pliers, but if you do that, be very careful not to damage the threads. That circular piece you see down there is what we need to remove next. Uh, what worked best for me was a set of 90 degree long needle nose pliers Take the tip of it and stick it in that middle bit there and sort of wedge against it and pull upwards and it should come out. So next up we have this pill shaped piece to remove. Now sometimes it comes out with the last piece that we took out, but sometimes it's stubborn and stays in there. So you just gotta turn the caliper on and knock it and it should come out. So next we need to remove this. This is the piece that actuates the handbrake. You just pull it right out. And then you need to pull out the, the seal as well. Moving on now to the bracket. And we need to remove these slide pins from it. And the way to do that is to get them moving with uh, some pliers. And then get this dust boot off of here. And I used a pick. That worked pretty well. And then once you get the dust boot free, you should be able to pull it out. So this last pin here is actually the, the source of my troubles. As you can see, it's pretty difficult for me to get it moving. And yeah, that's the reason why my brake wasn't able to clamp down on the disc as well as it should. But luckily, once I got it moving, I was able to get it out. I just had to clean it up a bit so that it would, uh, 
it would move inside there freely. Last thing we need to do for this bracket is remove these dust boots. So that is our entire brake caliper disassembled. And what I've done now is degreased and cleaned this really well. And I've also sanded it down a bit with some 800 grit sandpaper because I will be painting this uh, silver. And the reason I decided to switch from red to silver is because my front brakes are going to be uh, spoon twin blocks. So I thought red wouldn't really go very well. And also I'm not sure exactly what the, the spoon color code is for the, for the blue. And I didn't feel like guessing, so I just went with something simple. I'll leave links to the primer and the paint that I use in the uh, description if you're interested. So I've got the caliper painted and I let it sit for a few days because I was busy. But yeah, I think it came out pretty good. So let's get started with the assembly now. And in general, you want to install things in the reverse order that you took them off. So yeah, start with that dust boot there. And then you're going to want to put in this piece here that actuates the handbrake. Just make sure that that bit with the opening is facing the opening of the caliper where the piston goes. And the reason for that is because you want that bracket to be just like it is right here. You don't want it on now, but that's, uh, that's how it should sit. So keep that in mind. So here's a look at where the next part we need to install will be seated. You see those two pins. There's also an O-ring that needs to be replaced that I've already done. So I took some more rubber grease and put it in that hole there. Then you put that pill shaped piece in there. And now the way I got this in was the hole on the back side of this, I'm able to get my pointer finger on there pretty easily. And uh, so I was able to use that to guide it in and uh, once you get it in, you'll be able to tell that it's seated if you, can't, uh, if you can't turn it back and forth. Next up, we have this square cut O-ring to install. You'll be able to see at the entrance where the piston goes in, there's a pretty big channel. So just make sure that that is as clean as you can get it and work on getting this thing in. It shouldn't take too much effort to get it seated. Next up, we have the bit that the piston screws onto. So you want to put this washer on first and then this one on second. Then you got this spring. Make sure the small side goes towards the end of it. And then you want this sort of basket shaped thing put on there afterwards. And if you squeeze on it, you'll get a little click. This seal here, I forgot to record when I was installing it, but you see there's a cut end and then a flat end. You want that cut end going towards the threads on this piece here. That's how it's installed. So now we got that piece to install and yeah, you just drop it in and uh, press on it and it should seat. And what holds it in is the uh, snap ring. So that's what we'll be doing next. So take your snap ring pliers, and if you have ones like mine, you'll only be able to get them in uh, about three quarters of the way, let's say, maybe two thirds. But once you get it there, if you don't have long ones, you're gonna need something else to press it the rest of the way. What I ended up using was a 90 degree pick. All right guys, the end is near. The last bit we need to install on the caliper itself is the piston. Uh, unfortunately, it is a massive pain in the ass. So this seal, you need to lubricate with some rubber grease. And then you need to also lubricate the piston itself with some brake fluid. But the technique that worked for me is putting the seal on the piston itself and then kind of sliding it forward and letting the, the end dangle off a bit and 
pressing in one side of it into the channel. And once I did that, then I kind of worked it around with my fingers. I tried it with a pick, just anything that's not gonna pierce that thing that you think then that can uh, get it into the channel will do. It's gonna take some time probably. You might get lucky and get it first time, but both times I've done this, it's, uh, it's taken me some time. So yeah, don't get too frustrated. You'll, you'll get it eventually. Once you do, it'll look something like this. You'll be able to move the piston around and that seal won't come out. So at this point, you need to get it threaded and start screwing it in. And there we go, we got the piston screwed in. Should look just like that. The seal is uh, it's seated properly. If it's not, you'll be able to tell because it'll usually be like a little bubble. It'll be a little something poking out. It won't, it won't be just flat like that. So be careful, make sure you get it right. And it might take some time, but it's worth it to get it correct. Because if you don't, it might let some dirt in or let some fluid out and you'll have a bad day. So next up we have this bracket to install. Since I painted mine, it was a little bit difficult to get on, but if you didn't, yours should just snap right into place. Then once you have this seated properly, you're gonna need to install this spring washer here, and then this nut. So next up we have this spring here to install. Make sure one side gets tucked behind that little thing there. And then you can either use a set of needle those pliers to get it put in place, or you can use your fingers. It's not too difficult to, to do. Now we have the bleeder valve to install. And for this, just uh, to make sure it's, it's snug. You don't want to over tighten this. And once you get your pretty new bleeder valve installed, I highly recommend putting on a new dust cover just to make sure you don't get any dust, dirt, whatever comes up from the road in there. One last thing with the caliper I forgot to record is that you need to make sure with the banjo bolt that you put two crush washers on there. One should go below the fuel line and then one above. This is very important. We're moving on again to the caliber bracket. The first thing we need to install here is the dust boots. And these are able to be installed backwards, so be very careful how you install them. This side goes into the bracket, and then the other side is where you insert the pin. Now these are pretty easy to install. Just kind of stick them into the channel and uh, yeah, spin them around a little bit and get these little kinks out of there. Before you install these, you also wanna be sure that the bores are clean, especially if you have a pin that isn't able to move around easily like I had. You also wanna be sure that the pins move freely back and forth inside of the bore. And if there's any buildup on the pins preventing that, get some sandpaper and sand them down until they, until they do. So this is the grease that I'll be using for the slide pins. But I think any silicone grease that's rated for high temperatures would work. Now you don't want to put too much of this because it can prevent the pins from bottoming out. So I would just coat it like I am here and then wipe off the excess. Once you're done with this, you'll be putting the slide pins in and all you need to do is just slide them right in. Press a little bit and the dust boot will come up and over a lip and it should stay connected like that when you move it back and forth. So that's it guys, we're all done. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this has been helpful to you. If this did help you, please let me know by leaving a like and consider subscribing if you would like to see more content like this. 
And if you have any questions, critiques, or anything else, uh, yeah, feel free to leave them in the comments.